Hey everyone, uh, my name is Calvin and welcome to my video tutorial for the Map Poster Creator. Uh, this is an add-on for Photoshop that uses map data from the Snazzy Maps website uh, and it works with Photoshop uh, and we're going to use it today to make a map just like this one. Uh, the first thing you need to do is just download the product file uh, like normally and uh, it's going to be a zip file so unzip it and inside you'll see some Photoshop documents. Uh, if you're on a Mac you'll see a preview of what the document looks like but uh, if you're on a Windows computer, it'll just show a Photoshop file. Uh, this is a uh, Extras and Updates folder. Right now it's empty, but if I add some feature to this add-on uh, in the future, I'll put it in there and make a separate tutorial video. So uh, if you open this up and you see a README, it means uh, the future version of me added something, and uh, that README will have uh, some information about the update. Uh, this is the README text file. It's got my email address, of course. Uh, it's got a little bit of information about this add-on and uh, any links to future tutorial videos, uh, including this one. So in this video, I'm going to use the uh, A2, A3, and A4 size poster creator. On my previous poster creators, I got a lot of questions about this. So A2, A3, A4, those are all A sizes. They're the same shape, right? So this is actually A2, which is the big one. A3 is a bit smaller, and A4 is smaller yet. So you just need to export this at whatever size you want. It's not going to like mess up the ratio or get squished. All these sizes are the same shape. It's just about the pixel dimensions. Uh, same with the uh, 8x10. Obviously, 8x10 is the same shape as 16x20 because 8 times 2 is 16, 10 times 2 is 20. It's just twice the size. So this one's actually 16x20. Uh, and when you save it, you can save it at 8x10 or 16x20 or 4x5. So let's open this one. I'll double click it to uh, open it in Photoshop. So here's what it looks like when we open it up. And uh, this is just basically the mock-up. It's the first thing you'll see, and this is just to help you market the products. Like you can export this image, put it on your Etsy page, or show it to your customer. But to actually edit the map here, uh, you need to go to this top layer. It's a smart object. And in the corner, it has this like page icon. So just double click that. And uh, it's gonna open a new document. And uh, it'll take a second to load here. Okay, that took about 30 seconds to open up, and uh, this is the actual map creator, and here are all your options, uh, but the first thing you want to do is drop in your custom map. So before you mess with any of this, uh, go to this uh, smart object here called One Place Map here, so just double click this uh, page icon, and uh, it's going to open a smart object, and this is a double smart object, so after you see this, uh, don't edit anything, just do it again. Go back to the uh, top layer, it's a smart object double click that uh, and then this is the final smart object and this is where you're going to place your map image so now I'm going to show you where to get that so I've already got it loaded in my browser but I've got a link uh, in that readme file to a, uh, a website called snazzy maps and uh, you'll need to create an account there it's a free account it just takes like like literally 20 seconds they'll send you an email verify your account and then you can just use this uh, style called clean gray that's where the link will send you directly now, this website has a lot of other styles of all different colors, but uh, this map creator, uh, this poster creator, will only work with this style. It's called Clean Gray. So once, you're, once you've got your account made on this Snazzy Maps website, uh, just uh, go to the Clean Gray template here, and then find the location you want. So I'm going to zoom in here to Phuket. This is a place in Thailand. This is actually where I am right now, over here. Uh, let's zoom in. And uh, I'm going to zoom in until I see some good roads. This looks like a pretty good level, but uh, I'm going to change that later on. So if you look in the side here, it says it has this download image option. You'll only see that if you have an account with Snazzy Maps. So make sure you make an account and make sure you're logged in. So go to the uh, download image option. It's going to bring up this sidebar. Uh, and then you need to make sure you enter here 800 and then enter here 1000. By default, it'll say something like 500 by 500, but once you change this, it should remember it. Just make sure it's 800 by 1000. And then make sure the scale factor is set to three times. And now this is sort of a preview. Sometimes it'll be zoomed in like this, but you can zoom out the preview here. It doesn't zoom the map. This is how you zoom the map. This is just the preview. So let's zoom it out so we can see it all. And uh, I'm gonna pan around here. I think I'll zoom in a little bit more. What I'm doing is, is trying to get uh, as close as I can uh, so I can start seeing these tiny roads. 
and sometimes the map doesn't refresh. This won't affect anything. It's just uh, just in your browser. When you actually download it, it won't have this blank spot. So let's move it around, find a good place, something with some interesting land and uh, some interesting roads. I think this is pretty good. If you can kind of imagine your poster, this shape, uh, that will help you place this map. And just ignore these uh, gray spots. Uh, sometimes they don't load in the preview, but uh, they'll be filled in in the download. So I'm happy with how this one is. So I'm going to make sure it's 800 and 1,000, and uh, make sure I'm in the clean gray uh, version of this map, the style, and make sure the scale factor is set to three times, and then just click Download Image. And uh, that'll take just a second here. My Wi-Fi is pretty slow. Okay, so it looks like uh, it's downloaded. And uh, it's going to show up in my downloads. So I can just go to my downloads folder here, this one. And uh, here it is. This is the image I just downloaded. I'm going to copy it and then back to Photoshop. And remember, we're inside that smart object. We're like three levels deep here. Uh, I'm going to turn off the default one. And then I'll just go to uh, edit here and then paste. And uh, it'll automatically paste that map in. And uh, I don't have to do anything else. Once it's pasted and the uh, default image is turned off here. Uh, I can just X out of this uh, document tab. It'll ask me if I want to save. I'll just click save. Uh, it'll take me to the other smart object here in just a second. And uh, that one looks like this. Again, you don't have to mess with this one or change any settings. Just X out of that and then click save when it asks you. So now I've got the uh, first part of the map uh, loaded. And now we need to update the land one, the one that covers the land. And that's this one here called place map here number two. So just go into that smart object by double clicking this page icon. And uh, it's not a double smart object, it goes directly there. Just turn off the default one just like before and then paste in the uh, map you just made and then X out of that one and then save it. So now we've got both of the maps uh, updated. Uh, this one we placed it in there, the first one, and then the second one we just now placed it in there. So now our map is totally uh, set up and pretty much ready to go. We don't have to change that at all. Now we can just scroll down to the poster options. And um, most of these are pretty self-explanatory, uh, so I won't go through everything in detail. I think you'll just have to play around with some of the options uh, and see what it looks like. I think I'm just going to go over the uh, major options here uh, just to get you started. So these options up here, uh, basically the major one is the color option. So this poster creator can't do separate colors for different things. It's a minimal based poster creator with a single color. Uh, so if you open up global color options, it'll give you one option. So if you double click this box here, uh, it'll give you the normal color picker and you can just select a different color just like you normally would in Photoshop. Uh, if you wanna do black, obviously you just drag it to the corner. I think for this one, I'll do kind of a greenish color. Something like that's cool. Then I'll do okay. And uh, I'll minimize that to keep things organized. Uh, this next option here, toggle invert poster, just an on-off option. It pretty much just flips around the layout. Just depends on uh, what kind of map you want to make. I'll leave that one off. Uh, this is the text options. So if you open that, uh, it'll give you this uh, option to change the text. Now in Photoshop, it's weird how it handles text. You can only edit text as long as it's highlighted. So if you edit this text, it's just going to change the name of the layer. It won't do anything. You need to actually highlight the text on the document. And you can do that by double clicking this T. So if I double click this real quick, it's gonna highlight it, uh, and then I can type in whatever I want. So in this case, I'll type in Phuket, and uh, down here, I can change uh, this subtext line. Just make sure you double click the T. Don't edit the name of the layer. Make sure you edit the text itself on the poster. So I can go here and type in uh, Thailand. And then I wanna do the, uh, the latitude and uh, longitude coordinates. So there was another link in that README. So there was one link for the uh, SNAZI maps. And then the other link is for this website, which is going to help you find the uh, GPS coordinates. So it's just like Google Maps. You can just sort of uh, pan around and then zoom in uh, where you want. Because the SNAZI maps doesn't have labels. So you have to kind of study both of them and then realize that in the SNAZI maps, we're zoomed into this area. So to to find the uh, latitude and longitude, just double click and it'll place a pin. And then uh, over here, it'll show the latitude and longitude. So I'm gonna copy the latitude up to 
decimal places, so 7.8405. Uh, I don't have to worry about all this, and I'll just do uh, copy, in my case, Command C. Then I'll go back to Photoshop and uh, double click that T to highlight the text, uh, and then I can paste uh, the uh, latitude here. Then I'll go back. I'm going to copy the longitude up to four decimal places and uh, do Command C. And then back to Photoshop, double click that T again to highlight the text. I can do a, uh, a dash here, space, and then uh, paste the uh, longitude. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay. And all of the text, uh, you can move it around uh, with the arrow keys, uh, but you need to make sure that this is selected. So as long as that tool is selected and uh, the text is selected, I can use the arrow keys and see I can kind of sort of uh, nudge it around and uh, position it wherever I want. So I'm going to move over the bottom one, uh, this small text here, so it lines up with the, uh, the name of the place. Okay, that looks pretty good. And uh, I'm happy with the custom text here, so I'm going to minimize that group. And then uh, this option here, map data from Google, uh, that's down here. It's really faint, hard to read. It says map data from Google 2019. Uh, if you're selling your posters in the United States, uh, I recommend you, you keep that on. Technically, you're supposed to do that uh, with Google Maps. And uh, down here, we've got map options. And uh, you can turn on heart mode, circle mode. It just sort of crops the map into a shape uh, and adds a slight shadow. And uh, I think I'll leave that off for this uh, little tutorial here. Uh, map border options. Uh, that is this double line you see on the edge. And if you turn that on and then open that group, you can see you have a lot of options. Uh, and you can sort of flip through those options and see what fits your project. You know, I just like the uh, classic double line style. I think that's fine. So I'll minimize that group. And then bottom fade options. So that's this kind of cloudiness that occurs on the bottom of the map. It's just supposed to give you a place uh, so your text is legible. So if you open that one up, you get a few options. Uh, soft gradient, hard gradient, uh, solid block, it just totally crops the map. Here's a, a custom one. If you turn that on, it's basically, it's hard to see, but it's basically a box that goes all the way around, uh, and you can customize that if you want to. I'll stick with the extra soft gradient. I think it's fine. Now just remember that if you do decide to use circle mode and create a circle map, it's still going to have this fade here. So if I turn off the uh, extra soft one, you'll see it stops fading it. So if you want to use the circle mode, uh, you can leave this on if you want to, but I recommend just turning it off. It's unnecessary because your text is going to be underneath the map, but I'm going to turn off circle mode and uh, use the extra soft gradient, and I'll minimize that group. Uh, this one here just inverts the map. You probably won't use this setting, but once in a while you want the roads to be white. I'll turn that one off. And then here is how you control all the actual map elements. So you can turn them on or off. If I turn everything off, it's just blank. If I turn on the roads, we're just going to see the roads. If I turn the land, we're just going to see the land. The water, same thing. So I think for a good map, you need at least the roads uh, and maybe the water. You don't need the land. And uh, you can change the opacity of these uh, elements by selecting the water, for example. Then you could go up here and change, uh, raise it or lower the opacity. So you can make the water really, really faint or you can make it as, as dark as the roads. Uh, it's totally up to you. So let me put it like that, just real light water. And uh, I'll do the roads. I'll select the uh, roads group. And uh, it's a little bit too dark, so I'll lighten it up just a little bit. OK, that looks pretty good. So I'm happy with this uh, map here. Uh, but I want to take a look at this in the mock-up. So I'm going to X out of this uh, document here. But I'm going to click Save. And it's going to take a minute to load, but it'll place this poster in the mock-up uh, so we can have a look at it uh, and see uh, what it looks like, what it might look like in real life. Okay, so here's my poster placed in the mock-up. So first of all, you can turn off the frame if you don't want it. Uh, so I'll turn that off. And then you can customize the color at the very bottom here by just double-clicking this box. And uh, it'll give you the normal Photoshop color picker. And you can choose a different color for the background. That looks good, so I'll do OK. Then you just use the uh, normal Safer Web uh, export, Safer Web, like this one here. If you want to save this image for your Etsy listing or you want to save this image and send it to your client, uh, anything like that's fine. 
if you want to export this poster for printing or you want to export a file that you're going to email to somebody so they can print it, uh, you'll need to do that from inside the poster creator. So just go to this top layer uh, back inside that smart object by double clicking the uh, page icon. And then uh, from inside here is where you'll actually export the image. And you do that by going to File. Uh, you could use Save As, uh, but I prefer to use uh, Save for Web. And uh, that'll bring up the normal Save for Web dialog. And uh, just make sure it's set to JPEG. And then you can change the size if you want to. Uh, since this, this is for an A size, it doesn't really matter. You can print uh, an A2 on an A3 or an A4. Uh, the A2 being the larger size, obviously you can scale it down to fit it on the A3 or the A4 paper. Uh, but you can just save this as it is, save it to your desktop, and then send this file to your printer, this JPEG image, or email it to the uh, customer who bought it from Etsy or uh, anything like that. So hopefully this is a pretty good walkthrough about how you can use this map poster creator. Uh, as always, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Uh, you can leave a comment on this video, but the best way to reach me is in my email address, just send me an email. Uh, and you can find my email address inside the README file that comes with this add-on. But uh, other than that, guys, thank you so much for your support and thanks for watching.